Hi, I'm Peggy Farron, and we are live with the Understand Photography Show, where we talk about travel and nature photography. Welcome to episode number 40. So remember, if you if you are if you can't watch this live at four o'clock on Fridays on the Facebook, it's facebook.com slash understand photography. That's our, our Facebook page, and we are live on Fridays at 4 p.m. We also take the recordings and put them on YouTube. Please subscribe to our YouTube channel, and then we also put them on iTunes as a podcast. So if you're a podcast kind of person, if you like to listen in the car, subscribe to us on iTunes as well. Um, if you're not shooting in the manual setting, if you're not completely comfortable with your camera, watch our free webinar. We're going to have the link in the show notes on understandphotography.com, but it's called How to Get a Solid Photography Education in Just Four Weeks. It's a 45-minute video, and it's going to teach you, number one, what you need to know, but it's going to teach you some basic photography. You need to learn basic photography it's easier if you learn basic photography while learning your camera at the same time. So that's the premise of all of our classes. Speaking of classes, we have a new Lightroom online class that Joe Fitzpatrick developed. It's, it's I forget now how many videos, I think it's 20, 29 short videos. They're very short videos, you know, one to three to five minutes. I think a couple of them are five minutes, but they're very short videos where you watch and then you do and then you watch, and then you do. It's the best way to learn. Such a good class. We've got amazing feedback already, and the price is unbelievable. I'm not even going to tell you. You're going to have to go on the website to see it, understandphotography.com. It'll be in today's show notes. Today, my guest is travel photographer and photojournalist Jim Cern Cernovitz. Cernovitz. <laughs> I was practicing. <laughs> Jim has had a long and varied career in photography. He's owned, a, you know, he started off, he owned a chain of one-hour mini labs. You remember those? Then he owned a high-end professional lab based in Milwaukee, Wisconsin. You guys may have known, you, you old folks might know it. It was called the Enlargement Works. Uh, he's been a photography instructor at the university level, and he's even had his own radio show about photography. Now Jim is enjoying traveling the world, photographing everywhere he goes. Welcome, Jim. Hi, glad Thanks. to be here. Thank you for having me. Thank you for being here. And we met, we don't even remember, we remember uh, where, but we don't remember what it ago, was. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> here in Naples, you yeah. live in Naples, you retired yeah. to Naples, like everybody well, does. I think photographers think in pictures. I don't remember names all the time, but I always can picture where it was. That's a good point, because I, I remembered your name, I remembered where I mm -hmm. met you, but I can't remember the function. No, but it was at the train station. Yeah. At Maple's Depot. Yeah. So now I, I'm going to just skip ahead a lot because you've got a long, long history in photography. But I really want to talk because it's a one hour show. I want to hear about your trip. Okay. I am one of the fortunate people to be on Jim's mailing list. And he is such a good writer. He needs a blog, which he doesn't have. <laughs> You need a blog, though, because you are such a good writer. Thank you. And the pictures, you're a great photojournalist. Thank you. I mean, I was really, every, every time you sent a newsletter out, I was so excited to read every single thing and look at the pictures. My only disappointment was the pictures were too small. I couldn't, like, enlarge them to look at them better. <laughs> well, we were in some pretty out-of-the-way places, and their Internet was really terrible and I couldn't send them out bigger. So to be safe, I would send them small. But yeah, I wanted to send them bigger, but I couldn't. So I'm going to get on you to get a blog. OK. <laughs> all right, so I want to hear all about this trip. It's such a weird trip. How in the world did you choose to go where you went? Let's, you can tell us where you went. Okay. I, um, I'm fortunate I'm able to travel uh, both with time and financially. Um, and we discovered years ago this company called Overseas Adventure Travel. I have nothing to do with them other than I, I use them. You're a customer. I'm a customer. A happy customer. Yeah. And um, they go to strange places, you know, off. When they say adventure, you don't climb Mount Everest. It's soft. But they go to out-of-the-way places. We went with them. They had a trip. Um, 
to Turkey and they, they always have a base trip and then they have a pre-trip and a post-trip. Okay. So one year it was Syria. That was like four years ago, five years ago. So we went to Syria. Wow. Two months later, all the stuff started. Oh my uh, gosh. And it was one of the, uh, we've been to most of those Middle Eastern countries. It was the cleanest, it was the nicest of all those countries. They liked Americans, everything contrary to what we thought. Oh my gosh. Two months later, you know, they started a protest and then, and, 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 and you, you, you don't go there now. Yeah. And then we went with them, they had a, um, a trip to Mongolia with oh a God. side trip to Siberia. Wow. And so we went with them and then uh, while we were in Siberia, the airlines changed their timing. So it took two days to get home from Siberia and they, they canceled that. I think they're going again now, but for four, so whenever we see a new trip, we jump on it right away in case something happens and they, they don't do it again. Oh so my gosh. about a year ago, they came out with this one, they call it the, the Silk Road. Okay. And it went to the countries of, and stick with me, I was just there, I have trouble remembering. Uzbekistan, Tajikistan, Turkmenistan, Kyrgyzstan, and Kazakhstan. So we said, well, we better go before, in case they don't have it again next year. Yeah. Turned out it was one of our best trips. Oh my gosh, it was so exciting to read the newsletter. Now, the Silk Road, tell us about the Silk well, Road. A long time ago, um, that's how all the spices and silk came from Asia to Europe. Okay. And they came by camel caravans through, uh. through these fabled cities, Samarkand and Bukhara and Kiva, Constantinople. And then they called that the Silk Road. Okay. And that was like since, you know, the earth cooled, that was that way. And then um, both Columbus and um, the Portuguese, Henry the Navigator, about the same time screwed things up because they found how to get to China and Indonesia where, and India where all this stuff came from without going through Central Asia. They went around. They went around. And Venice was sort of like the end of the... Silk Road. It would go to Constantinople, then Venice would send their ships there, and then it would go, well. And Constantinople is now Istanbul. Istanbul. Yeah. Okay. They have a song about that. Oh, they do? Yeah. Const Istanbul, you Constantinople. Don't you, you, you'll hear it. You, ah. you can, yeah, it's a funny <laughs> song. Uh, so that's when the Silk Road sort of went out of business. All these cities that were once like the New York of their time, back about the early 1400s was their peak. Okay. And then it, they just sort of boom kinda, and wow. Yeah. So it really that's uh, so interesting. Yeah, yeah. So, so where did you fly into? Uh, we flew from well here to Atlanta to uh, Istanbul to um, Bishkek, Kyrgyzstan. <laughs> wow. And so the tour started at Bish. Bishkek. Yeah. Bishkek. And that's the capital of Kyrgyzstan, and we were really surprised. It was a really nice place, a nice hotel. I'm, I'm thinking everything is going to be goats and pigs. And there was a movie called Borat. I don't know if you ever saw I didn't that. See we, it, it was but a, I've heard of it. And it, that's what I thought. Every, it, it was everything was the exact opposite. So we, we flew into there and we spent um, several days there, and uh, then we went to. We went to Turkmenistan. We flew to Turkmenistan. Some of the biggest biggest deserts in the world you have to cross. So this time we flew there. Okay. And then from Turkmenistan we went to Uzbekistan. And then to And this was Kazakh by bus or car? Yeah, or something? then no, then we flew to Uzbekistan. Then we then the rest was by by minivan buses, yeah. Wow. But there were only 13 in the group, so everybody had their own seat. And wow. All that, yeah. Wow. All right, so what were some of the highlights of the trip? Each was different. Um, until the 1800s, while we're subduing the Indians in America, the Russians were doing the same thing in this part of the world. And these were all tribes, like Kyrgyzstan, they're the Kyrgyz people. Uh, the Kazakhs and the Kazakhs, and these are all different tribes. Okay, I didn't know this. And the Russians made it all, they subdued them by about 1850, about the same time with us. Wow. It was It was all done. 
and then they just called it sort of Central Asia. And then Stalin, who was a total nutcase, he made them countries and he sort of divided them up by ethnic groups, but to keep them all separate. He didn't want everybody to be, you know, Together. maybe get him. He was paranoid. Oh. So Stan means land of. So Kazakhs and land oh. of the Kazakhs. Oh, I Turkmen always wondered about all land the Land of the Turkmen, yeah. <laughs> And these people were, you know, that's what they were. And then when the Soviet Union broke up, uh, at first they were really are upset. They wanted to be part of mm -hmm. Russia because they were getting a lot of benefits from them. But now, uh, so it was pretty grim for a while, but now um, they're all doing quite well from what I've seen because they wow. have a lot of oil and gas and minerals. Okay. So the first city was called what? Bishkek. And in what country? In Kyrgyzstan. Bishkek. B-I-S-H-K-E-K. -E Bishkek. At least, they all, all these countries except Uzbekistan use the Cyrillic alphabet. Oh, so, so you couldn't even read the, <laughs> no. oh my we're, gosh. We were able, it was funny, um, some words we were able to figure out, like photo, the letter, the phi, the circle, that's an F, <laughs> and then it would be Phi O T O, hey photo oh, and stuff wow. like that. So <laughs> just figure out a camera store, stuff like that. Oh but, my gosh! Yeah. Now, speaking of cameras, stores, you said, but what kind of camera gear do you have? Like heavy DSLR stuff, or did you I go use, light? Or no, I use a Nikon um, D seventy one hundred with an eighteen to uh, three hundred millimeter lens. Okay. I do not ever take the lens off because. Dirty. You get dust on your sensor, and and you're dead. And yeah. you know we're in a desert a lot, or there are animals, you know, chicken, birds, and fed the dust. So oh my no, gosh. It, it never comes off. And so that's a good travel lens since yeah. it's just yeah. such a huge range, range yeah. right? And the, that's not too heavy of a camera either. No, it gets heavier every day though. Yeah, I know. <laughs> the older I get, everything I have yeah. is heavier. I tell you. So well, what is annoying is everybody on these trips. Always kid me. Why are you carrying that? Yeah, 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 and then I get home. Oh, do you have any pictures of this? Do you have any pictures yeah, of yeah. that? Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I know. I'm lucky. Whenever I travel with Joe, he always has all kinds of stuff he carries, <laughs> and I'm like, we're both Canon shooters, so it works out well for me. <laughs> but I do. I go lighter and lighter. Yeah. You know, I got the little Lumix now, and but I still, it's hard when you get used to a DSLR. It's really hard to. To yeah. not have a real camera. Well, you I know? also found you don't want to have a camera without an eye level viewer. I also have a Fuji uh, X20. It looks like a little Leica. Okay. It's about that big, and that's my backup camera. I also always have two cameras in case oh, good one advice. breaks. Great advice, yeah. actually. But it doesn't have the eye viewfinder? It does. That's oh, it does. I have it. Yeah. yeah. Because you can't take pictures looking like this, the no. people you're taking, it, it gives totally wrong vibrations. Well, the you problem is for me, because my Lumix, I made a purchasing mistake because mm -hmm. there is no viewfinder. It's all live view. And I can't even see the back of the camera in the bright sunlight. Mm -hmm. It's just like guessing on where I'm taking a yeah. picture. So I'm going to get another one, but I'm trying to hold off. <laughs> you can always buy too much camera gear because you always need something. So, all right, so when you were in Bishkek, that was your first stop. You were mm -hmm. there for several days, you said? Yeah. So what did you do? I mean... It, one day, it was quite touching. Um, it was the... I can't remember now. Maybe it's the 70th anniversary of the end of World War II. Okay. And they're having a parade. Oh. And there are all these people holding these pictures of people, you know, with all the medals and stuff. That I think they, they're probably... Most of them are my age, so these are probably the children of the people that were in... Um, that died in the war? Or I don't know if they died or not. Cause they oh, not, just but they, they were, were in the but war. I don't know, probably some did. But um, they're quite touching, you know, they're beholding the pictures of their relatives. Um, they seem to make a bigger deal of Memorial Day than we do. Oh, um, wow. Because a lot of these people were fighting the Nazis and uh, part yeah. of Russia. You know. Wow. And then... Um, so oh. now that, do you have any tips for photographing a parade? I mean, that's where no, a I long don't, lens. No, the parades are no. I, I, I don't take pictures of things like that or mainly not a lot of buildings and stuff. I, I like to take pictures of people. Okay. And um, 
it's really funny, this part of the world, it's hard not to take pictures of people because they'll come up to you quite often and want to take, they want to take pictures of me <laughs> And, you know, there'll be a guy with the iPhone taking a picture with, with the American. And my wife has red hair. Oh, the red-headed goddess, you know. Ah. You'd, you'd be, you, oh, you couldn't blonde. move. You'd be swamped really? <laughs> with your blonde hair. Yeah, it's really funny. not a lot of Americans or even probably not even a little Britons go there, right? Right. I mean, just Very few um, Americans. And so the people are dark skin, like Arabs? Is that what they uh, look No, like? it's funny. Um, there's maybe 20% of them look Russian, like okay. European Russians, you know. But that would like, be like us. Like us, but you, know, you can tell a Russian, they just sort of uh -huh. more stop. But then, like, Kyrgyzstan, Kazakhstan, their eastern border borders China and Mongolia. Oh, so they look so more they like look the Mongolians? Mongolians and Chinese. Um, Turkmenistan borders Iran, and they look more Semitic, more Middle Eastern, and then there's everything oh in between, gosh. and uh, it's really a, a melting pot. And then um, I guess it's a huge distance that you went. Oh yeah, these countries are. You know, I think Kazakhstan is the 16th or 19th biggest country in the world. Wow. So that's why you had to fly some. Yeah. Oh my goodness. So now, uh, so you you know your pictures. Of course, I was lucky enough to be on your newsletter list. You, you love to take pictures of people, and you really feel the character of the people, mm -hmm. I, I think, anyway. I mean, is there something that, that you look for, or did you, do you see something, or, or just you're like, oh, this looks interesting? Is it the way you're shooting? I don't know. Well, first of all, I'm sort of weird, uh, according to my wife. <laughs> I'll show her the pictures, and she'll say, well, where was that? i say, you were standing next to me. <laughs> <laughs> well, I didn't see that, so maybe photographers see things differently. But I'll look for different kind of people, look for faces. Um, if somebody looks really nasty, I won't do it. Or that's where the 300 millimeters comes in. <laughs> you, you can, can take shoot. pictures from far away and, and get close. And they don't know it, right? And, uh, uh, but a lot of times, I'll just hold the camera and I'll go. You'll and, just point at them. And, and then I go and I show them the picture, and they usually laugh and oh, stuff wow. like that. Sometimes they'll then take their camera out, take a picture of me. So. so now these people all have iPhones? It's big cities? Yeah, it's surprising everybody there. Everybody has an iPhone. Yeah, I'm <laughs> expecting, you know, people living in dirt with goats and sheep, you know. and But they're just regular they're just cities regular like people. anywhere else. Yeah. Uh, wow. Yeah. So, all right, so like, let's stay in Bishkek. Is there anything that really like gripped you about this area that other than you were surprised they weren't goats and stuff? <laughs> well, we went out uh, outside of it then. The, the company took us, you know, maybe a half an hour and um, these people were nomads. The, the Kyrgyz people were nomads up until the Russians forced them to settle down and grow cotton. This whole area was to produce cotton for, for Russia. Mm. So their horses are really, really big. So they had these um, demonstrations of, um, oh, there must have been a dozen or 18 of them, of all their horse stuff. And they would, first they would put these little, like ribbon-like things with a weight on the ground and they would go running as fast as they can and lean over you know, and try to scoop, oh, to up, scoop it thing. up on that horseback, was one thing. on the big horses too. Yeah. And big then, like Clydesdale kind of big? No, like race horses, you know, oh, fast. Oh, like thoroughbred yeah. kind of big. Um, later I could show you some pictures. Okay. And, um, we'll have pictures on uh, understandphotography.com. Okay. And then they had a one with, um, uh, they would wrestle. Two of them would come up and wrestle, try to pull the other guy off the horse. Oh, wrestling on the horses? On the horse. You know, this was all for in the days when they were warriors and they oh would fight. Oh, my God. And then they had a thing, they had a dead sheep, <laughs> which weighs, and they would have like, it was like soccer, and they had to pick up the sheep, you know, from the horse, and then take it and throw it to the goal, and the others would try to take it away. And I it mean, was a dead sheep? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That's so gross. Well, it got grosser because then... Um, was, there, was there like blood all over the place? No, no, no. I think they sewed it up, you know. It was, oh, my gosh. But uh, um, took us another place, and they, they still hunt using eagles. Oh. They have these trained eagles, and they, um, 
took this nice, beautiful, fluffy, cute bunny rabbit, and they put it <laughs> here, and they gave it some carrots, and then the guy is up there, and he lets the eagle go, and it just goes flies, and it pounces on the rabbit and killed it. That they just did that for show? Yeah. Hopefully they eat well, the rabbit Well, then they or eat something. it. Yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> but that's how they used to, a lot of their, every, every tribe had several of these guys. That was their job, uh, you know, to feed the rest, to help feed the rest of them. Okay. Using the eagles to feed us, huh? But um, this was more of a just for, this is our heritage. We're yeah. showing you our heritage. Mm -hmm. And this company sounds really interesting. Yeah, they I'm going to have to look it up. We'll put the name of the company in the, in the show notes as well. And then, um, I can't remember it been like 29 days and it's hard to remember I got to go back and I look know at my I'm, notes well, I'm glad I got you right away too I was <laughs> really surprised because I, I, I asked Jim to be on the show while he was still on the trip and I thought oh he's not gonna because I had this Friday open I thought oh he won't want to do it because when did you get back three days ago Sunday night yeah Wow, and a lot of time to recuperate days. during the rain we had for oh yeah we three had straight days, terrible yeah. weather so all right so anything else in Bish Keck that really, uh, really no, interesting. I think I, yeah. Now, so when you're as a photographer, let's just stay in Bishkek. Bishkek. Do you try to tell the whole story, or do you just take pictures that interest you, or a little of both, or a lot of both? <laughs> I, I take. I don't know if I'm giving away a trade secret of photographers. The way to look like you're a great photographer is take lots of pictures and only show the good ones. <laughs> so, so, yeah, I take pictures of everything, everything. Uh, and even stuff that seems dumb, you know, three years from now, I say, I saw this thing, it was so bizarre, and here's a picture of it. Yeah. You know, and if, you, if I didn't take it, so it's only a click. Back in the film days, every time you went like that, that was 50 cents, right? I know. Now it's nothing, so. Well, it's time. Take pictures of everything. So. But to save time, you shoot in JPEG. Yeah. And you don't do much no, processing. I uh, Don't get me worked up about <laughs> JPEG and RAW. Uh, if you expose properly you know, and learn your, how to do it, you should be uh, fine it makes no JPEG. difference. But I'll leave it there. I you know, when I, <laughs> I was one of the first professional photographers in this area to go digital. And I, of course, I don't, you probably remember, I, there was a lot of flack. Mm -hmm. Everybody was n against it, and everybody was mad at me, and what's wrong with you, that's not gonna last. Well, then they started slowly becoming digital photographers. Well, then you had to shoot in JPEG, because if you didn't, if you shot in RAW, that meant that you didn't know what you were doing, you weren't getting good exposures, and you have to shoot in JPEG. Now I think most people shoot in RAW, just because you do have more options if you're gonna be editing them. But you do very little editing, so mm -hmm. you don't need to be shooting. In. And in fact, my advice to the new students, I say, are you, did you grow up on Photoshop? Are you comfortable with Photoshop? If they say no, I say, just stay in JPEG until you, you know, learn what you're doing. And then if you want to change to RAW later, then go for it. But if they're just learning photography, they have to learn photography and all the software if they want to shoot in RAW. So it's like double, it's too much stuff to learn all at once, in my opinion. Well, I go back to the Stone Age, the Jurassic <laughs> period of digital photography. Jurassic. One of my clients was Cole's department store, and I did their work, and all of a sudden, three quarters of the work stopped. I said, did we do something wrong? No, no, we went digital. This but is they, when you had the lab. Yeah, and what they had was a black and a leaf was the brand, black and white digital camera. And they would put, it would, could only be still, still stuff, like a sweater, you know, or something they're going to sell in, the, in front of a newspaper ad. And they took it three times with a red, green, and blue filter. Oh, my So that's gosh. how far, yeah, that was before. Then they had to combine them. Uh, oh, I, that's yeah, before my yeah, time. Or yeah. at least I never even, <laughs> I never knew about that. Yeah, they couldn't do anything that moved because you needed the three filters. Wow, that's interesting. Okay, so let's go back to Central Asia. Yeah. <laughs> All right, so then you flew to Turkmenistan. Okay. Which is to the south. It borders um, I never even Iran heard of it. and Afghanistan. Wow, I never even heard of it. Okay. And, and what was the highlight there? <laughs> it was the weirdest place I have ever been. Oh my gosh. They have this dictator, and he's the father of all Turkmen. That's his official title. And all the buildings, been built since his pred since like 1996 when they are covered with white marble. 
they're all beautiful. They're all tall buildings or covered with white marble. Manicured, all the thing, everything you see, flowers, beautiful grass, everything is perfect, but you don't see people. You see all these buildings, all these plazas, all these, there are no people. There are very few cars. You don't see delivery trucks or taxi cabs. I or saw anything. the picture. Now, what, yeah, it's what's the really story bizarre. with that? I, nobody knows. I mean, it's like, are these empty, you know, just for show? Um, their airport cost $8 billion <gasps> for this little nothing oh country. Oh, my yeah. gosh. <laughs> but it's because they have oil? That's what yeah, the money is? Yeah, a lot of oil. Oh, yeah. Wow. Oil and gas, yeah. Oh my gosh. So it's really bizarre, yeah. So the, tell me the name again. Uh, Turkmenistan. Turkmenistan. So that's the one with the marble buildings. Yeah. And that he, nobody's there. The current <laughs> guy's not quite as bad as the predecessor who required all the watches and clocks to have his picture on them. Oh my amongst gosh. Amongst other things, yeah. <laughs> yeah. And he changed the calendar, the months were named after his mother and things like oh that. Oh my yeah, gosh. Really That's weird. the predecessor, not yeah, the new guy. Yeah, but this other guy's almost as bad. And, oh my gosh. Yeah. So dictators, still dictators yeah. over there, huh? Yeah. Now, was the governments really different in each country that you went to? We weren't affected whatsoever. Okay, you just by hear anything. the stories. We did whatever we want. We were told not to take pictures of police and soldiers, but other than that, we, we took pictures of everything. They probably want you there. Yeah. You know, when we started going to Cuba, oh, my mother was praying the rosary. She was so afraid going, <laughs> oh, you're going to Cuba. It's so dangerous. But they want us there. Right. They want the money. They need the tourist money, you know. And they were just, of course, Cuba's a very safe country. So um, anyway, so all right, the white marble there. Mm -hmm. How long did you stay there? I think three days. We went out in the country to see... Um, Supposedly the biggest mosque in Central Asia. Wow. In the middle of nowhere. Uh, but that's where this president was born. So uh. he built this gigantic, gigantic, beautiful, covered white marble mosque in the middle. And there was nobody there. We were the only people there other than the guards and stuff. It's just weird. Where no are all the people in that country? We don't know. I, I, you never saw hardly any people? Very, very, very few. Yeah, it's strange. Wow. It, it's just weird. So do you think that they just, because it is a dictator, do you think he's like, this is where you have to go as a tourist? Possibly. I don't know if there are many other places to go besides that. Oh, but, okay. Uh, but I think he's just showing off. They were getting ready to have some kind of, um, like, the Olympics for that part of Asia. Uh -huh. And they were building this Olympic village with monorails and everything. Yeah. Wow. So me, our guy didn't think we would have internet there, but uh, he said last a month ago there was no internet. We had internet; it worked fine. He thinks they're loosening up for this oh, event. He doesn't okay. know it'll happen once it's over with. Wow. Yeah. Yeah. All right. So where else? What's the next step? Stop. Then if you can remember. <laughs> then we went to Uzbekistan. Okay. Now that I've heard of. Yeah. That is the. Um, these other countries, the people were nomads. Uzbekistan okay. is wetter, and they were sedentary people, and that's where the big cities of the uh, the Silk Road were. Um, okay. And they're, they're sedentary people. Okay. And um, we went to one called Kiva, K-H-I-V-A. Okay. Still has its city walls th around it. Oh, wow. Huge mud brick walls, and... Um, and those walls are from like ancient times? Yeah, yeah. Oh from my the, gosh, from that's the, so cool. Well, part of the problem is um, nothing, I mean, by American standards, it's old, but very little, this whole area is before around 1250 because Genghis Khan came and <laughs> wiped it all out and destroyed everything. Oh, okay. Then it recovered um, after that again. But okay. uh, it was still by American standards, you know. Uh, yeah, everything, yeah. if it's more than 200 years old yeah. to us, it's really old. <laughs> and this is really out of the way. And until 1924, they still had a slave market. They bought and sold slaves. That's like oh less than 25 years before I was born. They had wow. slaves, yeah. Mm -hmm. Wow. Yeah. <laughs> that blows your mind. Yeah. So that was... 
That was pretty cool. And then we, a few days there, then we took a bus through the Kizilcom Desert, which is one of the worst deserts in the world. But every 20 miles in the days of the Silk Road, that's about how far a caravan could go, uh -huh. there would be um, like a Holiday Inn. It was called the Caravan Sarai. And it was this huge building. There'd, all, there'd be water there. And they could go in and there'd be walls to, to protect the, it, they paid. And they would food for the camels and the people could sleep there and all of that. Oh, so yeah. some of them were st are still there. And then... Uh, and they're still there like, but not in the same... Some are pretty decrepit. Others, um, one was restored. Oh, for the wow. Tourist. Yeah. Just for tourists? I mean, you can't stay there. Though, no, right? no, 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 no. It's just a... You see area. what it's like, so, yeah. And oh lot my of, God, that's so cool. And one is right in the shadow of an airport, you know. Just what's so. the name? Of, what are they called? Or you don't remember? I, I'd have to look on the, okay. the pictures, uh, but it was between um, Kiva and Bukhara. And then, so, so how how the desert? What's it like? Is it like sand dunes, or is it like rocks, or rock and gravel? Not not like you think of the Sahara Desert. It just empty and we were there during the wet season so there was a little bit of green here and there okay. they say in, by, in about two three weeks it'll from then so now it'd be all uh, dry dried out oh, you know? wow. so those springs and wells were very critical in those days oh my gosh I can't imagine going by camel no. <laughs> I've never been on a camel in my life no. <laughs> you can ride a camel here at the Naples Zoo yeah. I just haven't done it yet <laughs> Wow. Did you ride a camel? Not there. I've been on camel three times, and they're horrible to ride on, especially the one humpers. Really? Uh, they're really hard because they get up, and you think you're going to fall off, and then you're... But in Mongolia, they have the two humpers, and those are great. They're like sitting in a bucket seat, you know, because you've got uh, a hump in, in front, the, and you, uh, you sit between them. <laughs> oh <laughs> but the, the one humpers are horrible. I, I won't go anymore on them. Oh, I've never been on a camel. That's one of the things I need to put that on my bucket list. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so as a photographer, this desert, were you, I mean, you're not that interested in that kind of stuff, but you have some beautiful pictures. Yeah, of I, I've taken them, but those are, you know, like Edward Weston, you know, that type of, I, we didn't have time for that either. We would make a few stops. And, you know, those you usually do sunlight, you know, with the shadows. Right. We, so there you wasn't just, much of a... You're considering them more snapshots. Yeah. Yeah. That's one of the the drawbacks, I guess. And if yeah. you have any advice when you're on a bus tour with some, with, you know, other people who are not, well, not it doesn't even have to be a bus tour. When you're on tour with people who are not photographers, is there any... Like, do you have any good advice for anything like that? No, Should, it's, try that's not to the be kind too annoying. You, I'm sorry. <laughs> what you want to do is... That kind of work, you have to take a private tour. I have a friend who does that. Like he goes to Africa a lot, or, and you say, this is where we want to go. But, but this company's pretty good. If you see something, you say, could you stop for a minute? They'll stop. Like you see a herd of some shepherds with a herd of goats and stuff. Hey, can we stop? Can we? And they'll stop. So they did yeah. have goats. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> the, one, the only time we saw them, yeah. But they'll stop it if you ask them to. If you Don't become a pig doing it. Yeah, that's the thing. That's, I think... Of course, Joe's advice is to never travel with people who are not photographers. Mm -hmm. <laughs> That's his advice. But, you know, I go on a lot of trips with non-photographers, and you just have to try not to be annoying to them because we can be annoying people because we, we would love everything. We want to take, we take too long. And yeah. Well, it averages out, though, because a lot of these people, every time they see a souvenir store, Oh, they, they have to stop something. at those, yeah. Oh, yeah. I'm not. The same junk you've seen every... Yeah. You can, so it, it averages up. Good point. <laughs> They're more annoying than we are. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so you travel through the desert to where? To the next city called Bukhara. Okay. And that, that was like the center of... all of that in the Silk Road. That was an extremely powerful city. Uh, huge buildings back, you know, these, they like, called them madrasas. These were like schools and giant mosques and stuff and buildings. And it, it was a, a neat one. Giant minarets that. Um, and a minaret is a tower? Those, you know, that's where they climb up to, to, call, the, to call for prayer. Oh. Uh, 
I didn't know. And now they're these little skinny things. These were, they look like lighthouses. Some of them are okay. huge. And it was a way of showing also how powerful the city was. Okay. How big these were and all that. You know, we're more important. And is you the city a still thing. a big city? You said this um, was the main, one of like the main yeah, it was, central it was a, city? It was a decent sized city. Uh, but now it's... Maybe the size of Tampa or okay. St. Pete, yeah. So it's... But now their industry is gas and gas oil, oil and manufacturing. Manufacturing. Um, okay. <laughs> Uzbekistan. Everybody drove a Chevy. I bet you three quarters of the cars were Chevys. In like Florida, almost all of them were white. Oh my God! And they were little. Uh, they have a Chevy plant there. That's why. Uh. And. Uh, they were little because a lot of these neighborhoods are very old with very narrow, winding streets. You couldn't get a oh, big car. Oh, that's right. Yeah, but a lot of cars and there's a lot of cars there. That's a good question, though. So is it warm there? I mean, is it? Oh, it's really hot. Okay, yes. it's, it's hot. <laughs> very hot. Uh, hot dry like heat. Florida or hot like It was in Arizona? the 90s, the mid-90s to 100, and they haven't hit full stride yet. So we'd often get up quite early and get things done and then after lunch go back and take a siesta till it started to cool down again. Okay, that's interesting. It's horribly hot. But no, you, you traveled with a tour company. I'm assuming you had air conditioning where you went? Oh yeah, in the... Everywhere, um, in the I bus, forgot, in, in Kyrgyzstan we went to this lake um, and that was up in the mountains and that was nice and cool. But other than that it was really hot. Okay. I like the heat, though. <laughs> I could take it. Now I want to go. The heat so, here is worse because it's wet heat. Yeah, that's what they say. But, you know, it's better for you. I think it's better for your skin. I hate that dry skin <laughs> feeling. So now this trip was a total of 29 days, you said? I think it was 28 or 29. Yeah. Oh, my goodness gracious. Can I ask, is it too nosy? How much did that cost? Uh, I can't. I think it was... I'm guessing around yeah. eight. Eight grand a person? Yeah. But and that it, I don't remember because they give you the trip. And then they say, here's the pre-trip. Oh. Uh, here's a post-trip. I think. So what was what, the, the trip trip part of it? I think around five. Five days? Oh, no, five grand. Oh, five grand. Yeah. How long was the trip trip? Did everybody do the before and after? On this time, everybody did okay, the whole thing. Okay, so. Yeah, we usually do it because we're not coming back. <laughs> you know, once you do these, they're not going to come back. So. That's so cool. Yeah. I, I really, that is amazing. I mean, how exciting to travel to places like this. Yeah. I mean, I don't know anybody. I mean, I never even heard of the two of the countries you went to. I, it's just, a, and you do this every year? Yeah, we're, we're going to Albania and some... Balkan countries in about a year. Wow, so you already have your next year planned yeah, out. Yeah. <laughs> and is it mostly because these this company puts these into your brain? They have a nice catalog. and. Um, I mean, are you going with the same company next year? Yeah. So obviously they're mm -hmm. doing a good job or you wouldn't continue to travel well, with them. They're different. They... I know a lot of people, the most important thing is how is the hotel? Do they have a good wine list? Blah, 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 blah. They don't do that. Uh, some of the hotels are crummy. I mean, they're all clean, but they're in the middle of where you want to be. Um, and they have a policy not to use chains, American, or if possible, they want to give the business to the local. So they're, they're all, some are really nice. I mean, some are great hotels, some are so, marginal, so. you know, <laughs> like, uh, but so it's not for everybody. Okay. Um, but you're going to be immersed in the culture yeah. more that way, right? Right. I mean, that's we, the first time we went to Cuba, they took us to Veradero, which is their, and I know I didn't say it with good accent, but it's their tourist area in Cuba. And it was like, why would we want to come here? We can see all this stuff in the United States. We want to see, yeah. we want to see Cuba, you know? So we never went back there. And the guy, we, we hired a taxi just to take us around, and we wanted to go back to the town that we drove through, and he, he couldn't believe it. He wanted to drive us down that mm. strip with the chain restaurants, and we're like, no, this isn't what we want. We want to see. We want to see. I think, and maybe that's, 
This is maybe my stereotype of photographers, but I think photographers in general, we do like to do unique things. Yeah. We, because we like, to, we like to do unique things, we like to meet unique people and try to capture it in our cameras, you know? That's what I think. It's my stereotype of photographers. <laughs> oh, jeez. So what, else, what other highlights from this trip? Um, well, from Bukhara, we went to this other um, city in Uzbekistan called Samarkand, which is real famous in literature. That's all these Victorian poets wrote about it. And again, that had huge, huge buildings from the 14th and all covered with this unbelievable tile work, blue tile. Wow. And, and they're up, they keep them up? Well, the Russians did a lot of restoring ah. of it, but they're still working on them. There's so much I mean, how to could do. you never, you could never stop working right, on right. stuff that old. And then from there, we're still in, um, we're still in um, Uzbekistan. We went to Tashkent, okay. which is their capital. It's a couple million people. Okay, and, it's big. And um, we went to the ballet. I mean, we saw Swan Lake. And oh my gosh. It was really weird seeing all these people looking, some of them look absolutely Chinese, while others with the blonde hair and everything in between. But they had, I counted them, I couldn't believe, 48 people on stage and 52 people in the orchestra. You couldn't afford to do that in America. The tickets cost us, I believe, twenty-two dollars. Oh my! Yeah, that's yeah, mm. and you know, you just couldn't yeah. couldn't afford it in America. Every year, I do the portraits of the Nutcracker kids here when they dance with the Miami uh -huh. City Ballet. Although I think the Moscow Ballet is going to take over. But anyway, I've never seen the Nutcracker. <laughs> I, I've been backstage, <laughs> but I forget how much it, it's really expensive. Yeah. So, and the kid, the parents of the kids have to pay for the whole price to get in and see their kid dance. Oh, wow. So, that's an expensive thing for even to be a participant, the ballet. But anyway, that's cool. Um, photo photographically, do you have favorite pictures that you took and why? Um, well, I brought a bunch. It's hard to show them. I can't show them. But, I can't show uh, The only reason ones of is people, because um, we do do this yeah. as a podcast. But I will, if it's okay with you, put them on in the show notes okay. on our website. Sure. But go ahead. Yeah. Um, the people? Uh, the people pictures. Problem with pictures of buildings or things, they've already been taken. Yeah. You can... You can go on the internet, get all the pictures and put them together and say, here, I went here. Nobody would know the difference. It's it's, um, I call it the Mount Rushmore disease. You know, it was one of the most dis disappointing things I ever did was go to Mount Rushmore. I oh, mean, because all, you've seen so many pictures? All my life, I've seen pictures. We get there, and there, it, there is. it is. And you've it doesn't do anything, it. <laughs> it just sits there. You go into the building, you have an ice cream cone, you come out, it's the same, and then you leave. Oh. So, you, you know, just about everything has been taken already except people. Yeah. So that's why I like to take pictures of people. And were the people, the cultures, were they really different from country to country as far as the way that they treated you? And you said the first city that they were all like so excited that you were American. Mostly they were all very nice. Um, we saw hardly any again in this Turkmenistan. Uh, yeah, that's weird. One of the best places to take pictures are in the bazaars. We oh, call it a farmer's market, but okay. they're giant, they're giant. And um, we weren't allowed to do that in Turkmenistan. Ah. But all the other countries, we, we could do it. And yeah. and their bazaars are, okay, so it's like a farmer's market. Yeah, but with but they're more, meat, with everything. I feel like everything. they're more colorful or something, yeah. and maybe it's just a vision I have that mm -hmm. based on who knows what. <laughs> yeah, they're really interesting. And, uh, and they sell and, more more right they don't just sell fruits and vegetables they sell meat um toilet paper everything they sell everything yeah um a lot of up until recently people would go every day they didn't have refrigeration up until recently well fairly you know so they got that habit um large part of the world they don't they go every day they buy the stuff fresh because they don't either have small apartments so they don't have big refrigerators or they just don't have it so, so the, the bazaars are open Every day. Every day. Yeah. Oh, they're not just on the weekends no, like no, here. No, no. 
and they'll be divided here to people selling meat, here to people selling vegetables, here to people selling clothes. And the meat's you know. kind of gross, right? Yeah. I remember I, when I was in the Philippines going to a big farmer's market type of thing and the meat was a lot of bugs, a lot of yeah. flies, a lot of smell, <laughs> a lot of like dead pig heads. <laughs> it yep. was fascinating yeah. though. And in the Philippines, I was with a non-photographer completely, so I, I just brought that little camera. I didn't even <laughs> bring it. I don't even think I brought a big camera with me. I'm not sure. But I got some good, great pictures anyway because it was so fascinating. It's a beautiful, mm -hmm. it's a beautiful country. I, I want to go back, and I probably will. I have a friend. She lived here, and she moved back, you know. So, um, okay, so that was your favorite. What about the culture, though, of the people? W did, were they real different from, like, each country? Or how they different were dressed are they from different. us? They were dressed different. Um, some countries, they dress just like you and I. Very occasionally you'd see somebody dressed in the native clothes. But, like, um, Tajikistan, almost all the women wore their your native clothes. Really? Um, and what were the native clothes like? Like um, these colorful dresses went in, in a bandana or something. Um, um, but the men would dress just like... Just like us. Yeah. And, not, and a lot of women just dressed like us too, but you'd see more of that. Now these are all, are these all Muslim, yeah. majority Muslim yeah. countries? Yeah. But, but they don't, you didn't see a lot of the... What do you call those? None of them. Hajis Only on the way home in Turkey did we see it. Uh -huh. They are militantly, militantly anti-Islam. Militantly. Um, in, I think, all the countries, it's legal for the women to cover their face. It's illegal? Illegal. Uh, I know in Uzbekistan, um, they, the cops can shave beards off of guys right there on the street. Whoa. Yeah, they're very against it. We felt very comfortable. The people, <laughs> you know, Muslims not supposed to drink. I mean, in Saudi Arabia, you, you beheaded for drinking. I did not know that. Booze everywhere. Booze uh -huh. everywhere. Vineyards, you see them growing vineyards, miles and miles of That's vineyards. That's the Russian influence. <laughs> yeah, well, no, even before that, oh, since okay. ancient times, they, okay. they grew this. Um, they haven't been Muslims for that long, and some of them since, some only since the 1700s. Okay. Um, but very anti-Islam. Um, they don't put up with that. Um, Interesting. Yeah, we yeah, really surprised us. And that's it's in all all the how many countries? Four. Five of them. Five countries. I've been in other um, Muslim countries, and you know, five times a day they have to pray, and they 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 used to have the guy climb up the minaret and you know holler, but now they have a recording. They don't do that. I, I never heard it at all in, in, oh, in a wow. month. And, yeah. Interesting. Yeah, it's very different. So are they more secular where they're not? Extremely secular, okay. yeah. They're, they're all officially secular, but, you know, like America, we're, we're secular, but most people are Christian. Mm -hmm. um, there, they're secular, but most people are, are Muslim. But we went to a Russian church in... Um, I think Kazakhstan. Okay. Uh, and you, you see them all over the place. And that was a, ch a Christian church? Yeah, a, a Russian Orthodox. In okay. We saw synagogues in Bishkek and Samarkand. Okay. Uh, so, you know, they're, they're, they got dictators, but they're, <laughs> um, they're secular. Okay. And they, they have that kind of freedom. Uh, that's nice, I guess. Yeah. <laughs> so of the places we've been, I felt really safe there. I, we had no problem thinking there'd be problems. Okay, that's awesome. Yeah. Hopefully it stays that way, because you probably felt that way in Syria too, right? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you never know what's coming around the corner lately, I'll tell you what. Um, so now, you, how many pictures did you take all together, do you think? About 6,400. Wow. Well, it's about, I average about 300 a day. Oh, well, I guess. Yeah, it sounds like a lot. It, You're yeah. gone a long time. And two days we spent most of the time in a bus, so I didn't take a lot of pictures. So. Yeah. So now you said you don't use Lightroom or Photoshop. Well, you use Photoshop, but very limited. You just yeah. sort your pictures on your Apple computer. Yeah. And 
do you have a s numbering system or do you put them in different folders? What I do is... How do you is, organize that many pictures? The first thing I do before I do anything, I copy the memory cards onto my hard drive. Okay. Then I send them off to Flickr so they're in the web. Uh, all 6400. And I have, I have a little hard drive that I keep in the safe deposit box. I also copy them onto that. Good for you. Then I start editing. I've had a hard drives crash on me, so I'm, me too. I'm anal about this. Yeah. Hard drives crash like mm -hmm. crazy, and it doesn't matter if they're brand new or six years old. It's you not never if, know. but when. You know, yeah. So. Okay, so. And then I'll take them and I'll put half of them on the screen. Look at, I'll look at them. I'll, those that have promise, I'll drag over to another one. Folder, but you mean? Like when I take folder? a picture of people, I won't just take one. I'll take maybe five or six. Of course. And then I'll look at them later. So I've got, I've got them all moved over now, so maybe... And when you say moved over, you're talking about a different folder. Yeah. Okay. So maybe 10 to 15 percent of them now are in the keeper, <laughs> keeper folder. And then I'll go through the keeper folder. Now I got, let's say I took a picture of you. I got five pictures of you, which one, oh, the eye is claw, this one. Uh, okay, now I get rid of those. and I got actually delete them? You throw them away? Well, because I, I, I don't delete them from the original. Because your make originals are all backed up, though. Yeah, but I'll, I'll just, um, instead of dragging them from this folder to this folder, so I'm not, I'm not taking them out of this folder. I'm copying them and pasting them to my keeper folder. Okay. So now I could delete them from the keeper folder. I get it. So then I keep boiling it down till I get, you know, the ones I really like. Okay. Now you, what do you do with them now? Now you, obviously your, your newsletter was amazing. That's why I want you to have a blog because <laughs> you're such a good writer. You're funny and, you know, the oh, pictures were great. And, I mean, people want to hear it. I am not kidding. I looked forward to your emails every time I got one. I t whatever I was doing, I would kind of drop everything just to look through it and read it because it was so interesting. So, but you do share as a volunteer, yeah, you said, right? I, um, I make, uh, I boil them down to 300 pictures. Okay. <laughs> 6,000 down to 300 or whatever. And sometimes I can make more and I make like a travelogue. Okay, like and a slideshow? Is yeah. that what you mean? Okay. And I personally narrate it. I don't do the music or stuff like uh -huh. that. They don't need me then. And I go to like um, senior centers and things like that and, and, and present it and these people really like that. I would so. like it too. I think it's very <laughs> interesting. I mean, the travels you've had are so fascinating and so unique. I mean, most of us, we go to Paris and um, where'd you say? I just forgot. Mount Rushmore. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that kind of stuff, right? In fact, I, some of my, last year I took a six week road trip and uh, I was pretty disappointed in, well, New Orleans probably was the biggest disappointment because it was like, what's there to do here besides drink and eat? Nothing. Right. <laughs> I mean, I went and looked at the old pretty houses. That was okay. You could see my granddaughter. Does she live there? Yeah. But I mean, Yesterday was her one-year-old birthday. Oh, <laughs> I want a grandkid. But anyway, um, <laughs> but the off-the-beaten tra path mm -hmm. travels that we yeah. had were just amazing. And, then, and the, in fact, one of the travels we did, what happened was my son decided to move to, well, his wife actually got transferred to Los Angeles. Well, I'm so sad they moved far away, but whatever, they're happy. So I said, well, I'll drive you because she, she had to go. She got the job. She had to go. So he... They sold all their stuff, and I said, we we'll packed the rest of the stuff mm -hmm. in my minivan. We took the seats out, and we went on our trip. And one of the things we did, I what was it, Road Trippers app? Have you heard of that app? It's for the United States. Maybe yeah, I you think don't I have it, Maybe but you I don't never travel in the United States. I don't know. But anyway, it, they have all these weird things. And so in, in Southern California... They have this lake. It's the largest freshwater lake in California, but it's dead. It's a dead lake. I mm. can't remember the name of it now. But I thought, oh, my son's not going to want to go there. But to me, I, it was so, he goes, oh, I love that. All, they have like all these ghost towns because the lake went dead and it stinks. There's the oh, the Salton Sea. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> it was so much yeah. fun, and he loved it, too. I was so happy he said yes because I thought he would say no to something weird like that. But... It did not make for great pictures because, you know, we got some pictures of dead fish. 
<laughs> well, you know what the Red Queen said to Alice? What? When you don't know where you're going, any road will take you there. So yes. It's just fun to wander around. It was fun. Now, is there anything that you want to tell the, the listeners, the viewers, about just traveling in general or any good advice? Well, just do it. Um, just do it. Um, that's the only way. If you're going to wait for the perfect trip, you're not going to find it. Uh, we like this company, but there's things I don't like about it, too, you know, sometimes. Yeah. And um, don't take too much equipment. Oh, uh, I think don't that's take too advice. much equipment. You won't need it. Um, and besides your camera, a backup camera, the most important thing to take is a plastic bag. Oh. So when it rains, you can cover your camera. Oh, and that is good advice. Keep them in advice. my pocket all the time. But other than that, don't... Keeping it in the pocket is probably better advice because how many plastic bags do I have? And how many do I have on me when I need one? Yeah, <laughs> Those I, are the a two Publix questions. bag folds up to about this big <laughs> and that thick, and I put a rubber band around it. And Just I, a little uh, Publix bag. Yeah, That's what you yeah. bring? Oh, my yeah, gosh. Yeah, and you could put it over the camera. And sometimes I'll take off my filter... Put it and screw it in, and then rip it out. And oh, I got everything. Oh, so it's on yeah. top of the camera. Yeah. That's but, a great uh, idea. But other than that, you did don't it rain a lot while you were there? No, it's a desert. We no, didn't no rain, rain at all. Okay, not a, not a drop. But yeah. boy, when you came home, we sure oh, made up yeah. for it. It's like, am I back in Florida? Because it was it rained more this yeah. week. I couldn't believe it. But if you take too much stuff, you're just you're wasting gonna, your. Yeah. yeah, and then you can't even find it in your bag what right. you're looking for. So. And just be ready because stuff happens fast and turn around a lot. Often you only go one way, but if you turn around every once in a while, you'll There's see a different cool. viewpoint. Ah, I love that. That's great advice. Turn around. Well, thank you for coming on the well, show. Well, thank you for having me. I really thank appreciate you. it. I'm so excited. I can't. So you have to share those pictures okay. with me so I can get them on our understandphotography.com site. So remember, if you guys check out the show notes on understandphotography.com, probably have them done Monday, Tuesday, but we'll have this video on YouTube, you know, probably Saturday or Sunday. We'll announce it on our Facebook page. Thank you so much for watching. Well, hey, by the way, while you're on our site, don't forget to look around. We've got hundreds of articles, and our motto at Understand Photography is we simplify the technical. So remember that. The articles are really uh, written in a simple way so that anybody can understand them, okay? If you're a beginner, if you're an advanced person, you're still going to get something out of many of the articles on the understandphotography.com website. So next week on the Understand Photography Show, my guest is going to be photographer, artist, and instructor Jeremiah Jenner, who I have been Facebook friends with for quite some time. He lives over on the east coast of Florida and is quite successful as a photography instructor and artist. A very enthusiastic guy, so I hope you'll watch next Friday, 4 p.m. Eastern Daylight Time on its Facebook.com slash Understand Photography to watch us live or just do a search on the Understand Photography Show if you want to find us on iTunes or YouTube. I'm Peggy Farron. Thank you for watching episode 40 with Jim Cernovitz on the Understand Photography Show.